services, representation, as well as promoting various campaigns. As a proud member of the Concordia community, I was honored to be asked to present our next speaker, Christina Parsonopoulos. In 2005, Five Days for the Homeless was founded at the University of Alberta as a charity campaign aimed at raising awareness for the plight of homelessness youth in Canada. In 2008, Christina decided to implement this campaign in Montreal after realizing the importance of the issue and the campaign's immense potential for success. Every year, students and volunteers forego their daily comforts and live outside with only a sleeping bag and freezing March temperatures. They do not shower, they do not change their clothes, they do not buy food. In the three short years since its beginnings at Concordia, Five Days for the Homeless Montreal has raised over $170,000 for Montreal's nonprofit organization, Donado. This year, Concordia University was honored to join forces with McGill University, Université de Montréal, and UCAP. A graduate of Concordia's John Molson School of Business, Christina Persinopoulos was very active in student life through her participation in the Commerce and Administration Student Association, Case Competitions, and Colors of Concordia. In 2008, Christina was recognized for her efforts receiving the Chopin Maples Competition Award by the Quebec government, as well as the distinguished title of valedictorian of the graduating class. Although her life ambitions and desire to help others have taken her to Kenya and Japan, she nevertheless has not neglected her responsibility to the Montreal community. And ladies and gentlemen, Christina Persinopoulos. face. 
I couldn't be so sure for the roughly 100 million homeless people there are around the world, 300,000 of them residing in Canada. If that number doesn't shock you, just in Montreal alone, there are 28,000 homeless people. And that's almost five times the number of people in this room. Or we later on this afternoon. <laughs> I agree with those who feel that global efforts should prioritize the people living in the most extreme poverty in other parts of the world. But it makes absolutely no sense to ignore the poverty and homelessness that exists right outside our doors. How does our youth get on the streets? Don't they have parents or family members to care for them? According to the findings of the Public Health Agency of Canada, Street youth reported leaving home mostly because of a constant argument with parents, being thrown out of their home, and physical and sexual abuse. Imagine if one of your family members left home and never came back. Now to this day, years later, you are still looking for him. This was the case for a young female Concordia student who came up to me during the five days campaign and said, I know this might be an odd question, but can you help me find my father? He had left home a few years ago to live on the streets because he had lost his job, felt ashamed, and suffered from depression. She is still looking for him. I felt utterly helpless. So these kids leave home because they have abusive parents, but aren't they young and healthy? Can't they find a job? For most street youth, there are few opportunities to work due to limited education, lack of marketable job skills, and the emotional instability associated with homelessness. These street kids become dependent on the street economy of panhandling, drug running, and the sex trade. Street youth are more likely to report having had sexual intercourse before the age of 13. Shouldn't 13-year-olds be chatting online or texting friends? Can you begin to imagine what these kids have to do to survive on the streets? How can they even begin to see a future for themselves? And who is trying to help them? The UN might agree that Canada isn't doing enough. Homelessness is one of our most visible and severe national problems. The UN expressed disappointment that the government of Canada could not provide reliable statistics on the number of homeless people in this country. Shouldn't we be concerned that one of the richest countries in the world has allowed poverty and homelessness to reach epidemic proportions? It's impossible for any of us to imagine what it is like to be homeless without experiencing it firsthand. So I tried to be homeless three times. The only thing that separated my body from the cold cement in March was a sleeping bag and used cardboard boxes found in a nearby dumpster. Josh Redler, my campaign co-organizer, and other volunteers chose to be homeless for five days in an attempt to raise awareness of the plight of homeless youth who do not have the option to go back home. Their home is the streets. Five Days for the Homeless is a way for, to help young people at risk. Every year in March, university students try to emulate the lives of homeless people to the best of their abilities by sleeping outside for five nights, regardless of the temperature. We did not shower, we did not change our clothes, and we did not purchase anything, including food. This charity campaign was founded in 2005 by students at the University of Alberta. After successfully implementing the campaign two years ago, two years in a row, we at Concordia University participated in 2008. We have all since graduated, but both Josh and I continue to organize this event. And every year, we have surpassed our goals. Due to its impact, 24 universities across Canada participated simultaneously, and this year alone, $221,000 was raised for homeless youth charities across Canada.